We're mud suckers. That's what we do. Nature provides obstacles for commerce. If it couldn't go up the Mississippi, you would see an impact to your pocketbook almost immediately. The Corps has changed from a construction operation to an environmental operation. Our business is pumps. We make an impact every day in the lives of the people and the nation. They might not realize it, but we do. Combat engineers perform lots of critical tasks in war zones, but back home in the United States, the Army Corps of Engineers plays another crucial role, public works. Much of that work is carried out by civilians under military guidance, like clearing debris from the Anacostia River here in Washington, D.C. Maybe the biggest public works job of all, managing and maintaining one of our great natural resources, the Mississippi River, the Big Muddy. The river mission is a critical mission uh, to the Corps, uh, and I think it is a critical mission for the nation that we, we effectively utilize this resource. It's ten times more efficient to move a ton of cargo on the river than it is to move it by a trucks. The Mississippi is a liquid interstate, carrying hundreds of thousands of tons of cargo imported goods and commodities from overseas upriver, corn and grains from the rich farmlands of the American heartland, petroleum products, coal, scrap metal, aggregate, downriver. Imagine a highway with 870 semis strung out back to back to back. Or waiting at a railroad crossing for 225 railroad cars to pass. That's how much cargo 115 barge tow is carrying. We have a 15 barge tow coming south down the Mississippi River. The Deanna Ann up there is called a towboat, even though it's actually pushing its 15 barge tow, chugging down the third biggest river system in the world at about 10 miles per hour. Once he gets the first nine barges in, get them secured, then they'll break the coupling. The Corps is charged with maintaining a nine-foot deep shipping channel for about 2,000 windy miles of river from Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It achieves that with dredging and other engineering techniques. Block and Dam 25 here at Winfield, Missouri went into service in 1939. They'll lock the first nine down. Once a barge enters the chamber from upstream, water is pumped out till it's at the downstream level. Once the chamber's down, they'll open the lower gates. They'll take the tow haulage cable and they'll pull those nine barges out, secure them below the lower gates. They'll close the lower gates, raise the chamber, and come back for the second cut of the tow. Block 25 has a 600-foot chamber, which will only hold the first nine barges of the tow. There's no wasted space. It's 110 feet wide, and the lashed together barges are 105. So getting through without tearing up the walls is a painstaking process. Not many people think of the lock and dam system as a military operation. But the Mississippi-Missouri River system is the third largest drainage basin in the world, and it's one of our most valuable natural resources, essential to our economy. 33 states connected by the Mississippi River and its tributaries, 33 states are draining into the Mississippi River. Well, it's huge. You know, uh, Port of New Orleans being near the mouth of the Mississippi River basically is connected to 14,500 miles of navigable waterways. Uh, the Ohio, the Missouri, the Upper Mississippi, the Arkansas, the Tennessee, and so on and so forth. And so that area serves 62% of the consumer spending public of the United States. So if the river is shut down for lack of water depth or draft, a ship can't get into the river, then commerce as we know it in the United States basically comes to a halt. 
It's early June, and Lock and Dam 25 is just coming off a condition called Open River. The dam's gates are left up for runoff from the spring rains and snowmelt to flow freely through. The difference between the water level behind the dam and below it is only about a foot. In the summer, when the river has its lowest flows, it can be as much as 15 feet. The lock and dam system was created in the 1930s to provide a stairway of water for both commercial and recreational boats from Minnesota to Missouri. There's a lot of traffic. Yeah, how many times a year do we lock boats? <laughs> All year, last, last couple of years we've locked up. All year long. I mean, it depends on the day. I mean, like today we might have two or three boats. Tomorrow we might have 15 boats. We average an uh, hour and a half to two hours per tow. And uh, on a 12-hour shift, if you get six on a 12-hour shift, that's keeping pretty busy. It just depends, too, on the stock market, how the, how the commodities are being sold and, and whether people are holding on to them or selling them. If the, the products are up in cost, then we move more grain. If they're down, then they hold on to them. Near St. Louis Harbor, the Henry B is preparing for its next job. South of here, the river is open water and can accommodate larger tows than the upper Mississippi. We'll be leaving here with 23 barges, loads of various product, uh, going to Cairo, Illinois, and turning and going to Paducah, Kentucky, which will take approximately a mm, day and a half, two days. We pick up barges, lots of coal and grain, and we take it just up and down the river, deliver it, take it to ships in New Orleans, and take it uh, to coal docks up here in the north. And just basically moving a lot of goods. The volume of commercial activity along the river is immense. Sixty percent of U.S. agricultural exports pass through the St. Louis Harbor. Typically on a very busy day, we can run 500 trucks through this facility. On a slower day, 200 trucks. But that's many days a year. You're almost never out of sight of huge grain elevators along the river, taking in wheat, sorghum, and corn. This is number two yellow corn, bound to become food sweetener or cattle feed or ethanol. Typically a grain truck will hold 800 bushels of grain. A barge will hold between 70,000 and 75,000 bushels. And that's what makes the barge system so important and the river so important. This elevator takes in grain mostly from Illinois farms and ships it about 600 river miles down to New Orleans for export. When we know ships are coming to the Gulf for loading, the barges have to be there at that time because grain has to move on a regular basis. It can't be shut off. For every day this river is closed, Commerce is not being served in Chicago, Minneapolis, St. Louis, Little Rock, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Louisville. All of those areas reached by the navigable waterways. It's fundamental. Uh, without the Corps of Engineers' help, we wouldn't be able to keep this riverway open. And so that's where we need their help with the dredging, with the lock uh, infrastructure, uh, the 1,200-foot chambers that are going to be improved up on the upper Mississippi River. Uh, that'll all help a better flow all the way down to export grain to the world market. <laughs> 